Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Agian and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Flooding once again in Williams Delight. A major conference involving the Department of Labor and a young student meets the challenge of a local author. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Our top story tonight, the recent rainy weather has wreaked havoc on our already fragile infrastructure. Problems once again in Williams Delight, and News Channel 8 files this report from the community that just can't take much more. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Of course, Jerome will be giving us the 411. We are under a serious flash flood watch. We have information for that. Just to let you know, two of the low-lying areas that we're concerned about in our territory in St. Thomas is the Nada area, and right here, uh, the Williams Delight King Carlton area. I got to tell you, we all know Miss Blackman here, president of homeowners for um, Williams Delight. We're going to hear from her, but I'm here now with the Johnsons. They are not happy. As the cameraman pans, and we're going to start talking to you, Miss Johnson, look what's going on. Public works, once again, you should be ashamed of yourself. Infrastructure is deteriorating here in the territory, and we are now into hurricane season. Miss Johnson, what is going on with your property, sweetheart? Well, you see all the water that's coming across the street. Yeah. Where uh, Centron, Commissioner Centron, put a swell in to direct the water from coming down the street, cross the street. And where is the water going? Directly into to your our place. place. Miss Johnson, did you Directly. sign up for this? No, I didn't. He had no permit, had no permission to do this. Now, did you call Centron and say, come look at what you've done? Oh, he came down. When? Uh, when was it? About last year, almost last year, when he came down, he was with them when they built this well. He directed everything to and go. And y'all tried to tell him this is not going to be good. It's, it's not Mr. Johnson, good. you're the man of the house here. Do you know what's going on? Yeah, I know a little bit what's going on. It's a heap of crookedness going on here with the government doing this here. Because when when they came here, I tell them that thing, um, that thing ain't going to work. Central say this is the government um, road. He could do anything he want. You know, which my neighbor right here, the, when they fix this road here, they fix it a little high. All this here was paved. They uh, cut the pavement down and put this swell here to get his water out his house. But look, he sh the ducks should be happy because look, the ducks have their own food. I'm yeah, glad you've seen that, Dwayne. All this duck and chicken water, we have a well back here, and that's what the well we use. And all this dirty water going to the well. Folks, the infrastructure, on a serious note, is horrible for our territory. There are only two shelters, the complex and Claudio Marco. Today, Juanita Gardine school children had to be sent home. They're making shelters out of the schools. But if the schools can't stay open, how are they going to open up the shelters? Lord, help us. The only people happy in Williams Delight, the only things happy in Williams Delight, are the geese. Look at them. They're saying hooray, hooray for Centron and Public Works. Keep ignoring the people. We're happy like this. With the Johnson family and Miss Blackman, history repeats itself over and over again, administration to administration. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And I want to thank Wes Small for bringing that report to us tonight. And the Department of Education did dismiss all public schools earlier than usual today. And in other news tonight, the Department of Labor held a major conference at the Divi Resort recently to discuss an employment in our territory. Let's take a look. Today it's like almost I came in and it looked like right after the storm. How many people are, you know, we all go through hurricanes. Every, how much people in here live through a hurricane, right? Everybody, right? And the sky is gray just like after a hurricane or before a hurricane, right? Then we come into this place and it's dark. Like when your house bowed up, I got, you know, I got to go back to my local colloquialism. When your house bowed up and it hot and it power off, you know, it gives you that feeling that we are weathering the storm. And for the last two and a half, three years, I think that's what we've been doing all over the world is kind of like weathering the storm. And for me, I, having been, I, I could look around in this crowd and see my peers, 
when I speak at the high schools, I say, remember Hugo, and everybody goes, no. When you remember Hugo, every time you think that storm was done, it just roared like a steamroller again inside of your ear, right? And that's how this economic recession was. I mean, back in 2008, when I first heard about the fallout in America and what was going on in the housing market, I said, you know, yeah, but it's not going to affect anything. And then things start to steamroll and get progressively worse. And every year I said, well, this is the last of it. You know, this is the last of the storm. I think we've gotten past it. And this year in the Virgin Islands, I pray to God this is the last of it. A lot of people are looking for the answers about what to do about this recession. We already have the answers, but we don't like them. We don't like them. You got to go back. We got to redo how we live rethink our expenditures, invest in our education and our workplace skills again, and look at the skills that we have in different ways and see how they apply to other jobs. Every day we see, every week I run the report on how many jobs are available in the Virgin Islands. And believe it or not, there's at least a hundred listing on each island every day, but they're highly specialized jobs. There was a time in America when you only needed a, a high school diploma, there was a time when you only needed a sixth grade education. There was a time in America when you could make it with two years of school because we had a different society. Well, now things have changed. We are moving toward a society that is going to take constant reinvestment in your workplace skills and what employers want for the foreseeable future. But guess what, folks? The economy is going to come back. We got three major hotels that are on the verge of building. We got a marina that's there. We got a, a infrastructure in Renaissance with Diageo plant. We got ethanol down there. We, I just spoke, spoke to some people who are talking about building Alpine. We're looking at alternative energy. There's a lot of different things. The next generation network of broadband is gonna wire us through fiber. We're gonna be available, a lot of resources. But if you are not prepared, you can't take care of that. If you're not prepared to take advantage of the opportunities that are going to be exposed to us, they're going to be opportunities for other people. Local student makes the challenge. That's coming up next on Channel 8. Stay with us.